All right, students, we are mostly out of time, only two minutes left. But I think that should be enough time to quickly prove a minor lemma that we are going to need for the next lecture. Um, lemma 69 for 20, the implicit function theorem. All right, that should be it. And as you can see, solving this is trivial. And this extremely important theorem is really elementary, so I just leave the proof as an exercise to the lecture attendant. And no need to go into any more detail here, the result is marginal. Obviously. And thus the result is easy to see. And now our proof immediately follows from this really important group theory result that you are going to definitely need in 100% of all of your algebra exams. I'm not going to go into any detail about what it states or how to prove it, but rather you will experience it on your own on an upcoming homework assignment. Yeah, then how are we supposed to figure out what you just did? Exactly. And then I told them that only everything we have done during the semester will be part of the exam. <laughs> oh man, they are so screwed. You've got three hours to work on this exam. I hope you all fail. Excuse me, Professor Dotson, I think you made a mistake on number number four. You used a term that we've we've never used in class or lecture or homework at all. What do you mean by metabelian and metacyclic? What is that even supposed to mean? Exactly. All right, guys, as you know, we do have an exam today. So I'll pass them out shortly. But Professor Cheddington, you never told us about an exam for today. I never told you about? I didn't mention that we had an exam today? Oh. Oh, my mistake. I'm really sorry about that, guys. Uh, I thought for sure that I, I let you all know. Yeah, is there a problem? So does that mean you make us take it anyways? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, and that's my mistake and I apologize. I'll do better next time. Now get to work. Today we would like to start introducing the natural numbers. Yes, finally, something I'm familiar with. You might think that you know what the natural numbers really are, but you, in fact, have no idea what they really represent. We begin by formulating the really elementary set of samelo frankel axioms. And this is how you define yourself the multiplicative identity. Pretty easy, am I right? And this is how we define a principal character. Any other questions? Yes, me, Professor Zach, I have a question. All right, let's continue then. So you have all solved the Navier-Stokes equations in the introductory course, right? Perfect, let us skip this part then. 